I think than um, anybody I can put a name to to promote our sport. The archer who owns all the world records, John Demmer the third. You know, the more difficult a thing is, the more important the mental game becomes. I, I didn't eat any supper yet either. How about you either. guys? You guys eat yet? I didn't eat. Oh, that. you know, uh, I got some crunch berries. Oh, oh yeah. Um, Grayson Parlo. It's like me taking three or four years off your eyes just because I weakened that prescription in the shooting eye. And don't put everything into my shot that I should, that I get a lot of drop on those heavy arrows and it's dropping all the way down. He said, well, you might want to think about going to a lighter arrow in the spring walking. And then that's what got that started. So. There we go. Um, like fa the Facebook app, I swear it like goes back every once in a while. Like they'll make some crazy change, and then you like look at the app or even online, and you're you're going through Facebook, and then there's an update to like iPhone, and then you have to update the app, and then it like it goes back like as a combination of like five updates ago, and you know, things get flip flopped around, and I don't know, I don't, I don't. I don't, no way. You know, it it would it would happen this way. I would go live, and we get dispatched for a. Um, I'm actually out of service, so it's okay. But we get dispatched for an accident with unknown injury. It never it never fails, John. It never freaking fails. It ha anyway, it's all good. Whatever. Um, yeah, it's all good. We're not. I'm not going to end it. Or this is going to be a, a relatively short one, anyways. We're not. We're not staying on. It, it is a coffee talk episode, everyone. So you you should have your cup of coffee. You know, John and I are are, are fans of our our morning mojo. Not to be confused with Yoast Mojo, but you know, still our morning mojo. So fans of both. Fans of both for sure. Let me two. Get rid of that. Minimize that. So I have both my screens up here. Um, so like, as always, it's a coffee talk episode. Once the coffee's gone, the episode's over. Um, my good friend, John Winker is joining me from First Flight Archery. He's chilling at the shop already this morning. So for all you Raleigh, North Carolina bow hunting customers, the guys that are getting his work done at seven o'clock in the morning better show some respect marcel um but anyways we're 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 having a, a quick um you know discussion about some archery stuff and in case you guys didn't notice um john was one of the i'm going to say one of the leaders in the discussion of supporting Barabo in a bigger way. And when I say that, there's Klaus, always, always with the beer stein, Klaus, always. Drinking way too much beer, my friend. You know that, or you just uh, just happens to be watching for these live feeds to pop up. He just doesn't have a coffee cup in German. Yeah. Well, it's the wrong time of day over there. But um, anyway, so. So when we talk about supporting Verbo, um, no one stepped up to the U.S. Open. And I, I don't get into amounts and stuff like that because I, I don't. But I will say this. No one stepped up in a bigger way than First Flight Archery, John and Leslie Winker. And that's one of the reasons that we're having this discussion um, in all sincerity, John, as, as my friend, as a, a fellow competitor. And, you know, I thank you deeply for everyone number one um i know that's not why you do it yeah i know it was and that's what's so awesome about it um number one number two um before we really dive into all that man you've made some major changes down there at first flight so tell everybody where you're at and and you know about the shop how long you've been in business because people see competitors and they see faces at tournaments stuff like that but few realize like there's not a lot of people that work in the industry own a business and have the ability to compete and still stay competitive you've managed to do that for a very long time in multiple disciplines now so why don't you just talk a little bit about first flight and tell us tell us some of the changes you've made recently 
So six years ago, um, about a little over six years ago, I decided to quit my engineering job and buy the local archery shop who was um, getting ready to go out of business or close his doors. Um, the previous owner has uh, three small or had three small boys at the time. They were playing baseball and starting to play travel ball. And so he was um, losing interest in running the shop because he wanted to spend time with his boys. Um, I, I talked to Leslie. Um, we had some pretty serious conversations about how poor we could be. And um, I quit my engineering job, which was very stable. And I bought the archery shop, which was not stable. Um, over the next six years, we, we grew at a pretty rapid rate. Um, the archery shop did really well, um, especially in year three and four. Um, kind of through COVID, even though COVID hurt us pretty bad when we had to close because of the government. Um, when we reopened the doors, my customers came back really strong. So that was really awesome. Um, this year, about five months ago, we expanded the shop quite a bit. Uh, I was able to lease the space next door to us. So now we have a 9,000 square foot archery range um, that'll, that'll go to 35 yards deep. Uh, and I can, I can probably shoot close to 30 people across. That's awesome. Um, so we're planning on hosting some, some events down here. Um, hopefully we'll get those indoor events lined up this year and we'll have some, some good stuff going on there. Uh, we were able to double our retail space uh, because we're using the old range for retail space and overstock now. Um, I'm hoping by the end of the year, we're going to have an online store. Uh, which we don't have yet, but it's only because I don't have the manpower to handle it. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully we'll get that going. And um, like you said, we kind of started talking about bare bow um, money yeah. a year ago or so. And with the shop doing as well as it is, and a large portion of my customers are bare bow shooters, whether they're new bare bow shooters or just getting into archery and taking a class to learn how to shoot. We teach on bare bow bows. Um, I thought it would be, I thought it was kind of my obligation as a competitor, as a participant, as a shop owner to kind of put my money where my mouth was. Well, and that's, that's the key component. Uh, my friend, there's, there is, to my knowledge, there is not another archery shop outside of Lancaster archery supply, but let's face it. They're, they're an archery shop, but their their online presence is much is much much bigger, and because they're kind of like the OG of 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 doing that, um, that has ever stepped up to support any discipline besides them. You're the first that I know of, along with Proline and Bodoc for you, the U.S. Open. But to be able to to say like like you said, put your money where your mouth is. That's the difference that we see in Barebow in my opinion than we see in the other classes well yeah it's, and, it's, and the thing is is everybody talks about well the payouts need to be bigger and more money needs to be given but the simple truth is first of all barebo doesn't have a lot of manufacturer support because we don't use a lot of equipment i mean really and truly like it's a it's a riser limbs string some arrows and a finger tab it's not like, you know, Excel true ball is not going to support bare bow. Why? We don't, we don't shoot sights. No. You know what I mean? Like, sights um, and yeah. you know, we don't shoot stabilizers. We don't shoot that kind of stuff. So it's not like there's a huge pool of money out there that people are just holding back saying, eh, we're not going to do it because we don't yeah. want to. Um, if bare bow is going to get monetary payouts, it's going to have to come from the greater barebow community, whether that be shops like mine um, or like Proline Archery, Bowdock. You know, I know some of the barebow companies pay out contingency money. So if you're shooting their products, mm -hmm. they're going to pay you if you win. That's perfectly reasonable, in my opinion. I mm -hmm. don't expect, you know, I don't expect uh, Hoyt to pay somebody shooting uh, a Spigarelli riser. Right. I don't expect, you know, Gelo to pay somebody shooting a Hoyt riser so that there's you know they're not they're not there to support everybody they're there to support themselves and that's 
reasonable. Yeah, but that's traditionally to, how it's been done for a very long right. time. And so if we want barebow payouts as a whole for anybody who wins, then we as a community are going to have to provide that money. Um, and I think what you're doing, um, if because it looks like, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but it looks like like you and I kind of worked together on this open thing, but it was kind of last minute off the hip. Um, sort of. I mean, it's something we, we, we discussed. Yeah, we, we've been discussing it for a year, but then you guys don't, you guys have no idea. <laughs> yeah, this, this one, well, it's, it snuck up on us, but we had suspicions at last year's open because there was some, there was some discussion at the open. We're standing there with checks and people are like looking around like, yeah, and I heard, have checks. yeah, they're not supposed to have checks, but once they did it, you know they were committed and the pictures were done and we're like they're like well we weren't supposed to do the open or like oh okay you know and and i remember us having the conversation like i wonder if we're gonna see this next year right. and then you know the conversation came up again at the lancaster archery classic um because and and i uh i'm gonna i'm gonna say this with um extreme caution because i'm not 100 sure if this is how the conversation went but there has been discussion in the past about some barebow companies sponsoring the classic but at the time they were basically pulling the money for all classes and a lot of a few companies said no we're not going to and i'm not mentioning companies in the situation i'm not saying that's 100 accurate i am saying though that if that's that's kind of the way it was perceived and and you know there's there's one there's one side of the story there's the other side and there's truth somewhere in the middle so you know the discussion came up with the classic like oh man like we're i think i forget what the numbers were they're staggering numbers from from barebow numbers to olympic recurve numbers and you look at the payout of olympic recurve versus barebow and they're like surely they match i'm pretty sure they match or they're within a couple thousand of each other but Barabo is supporting the classic a heck of a lot more than what Olympic recurve is. And John and I, and then a few other um, small business owners and, and whatnot, uh, Dwayne and Calvin, for, for example, were, were part of this conversation. And we talked about this consortium of sponsors getting together under the Barabo project to support Barabo at the classic. Um, I think some things have changed um, in regards to that. And John, we can kind of get into that a little bit um, with the classic. And, and, but I think this U.S. Open showed how much, and, and I want everybody who listens to this, both this live version and then eventually, uh, probably later today, the, when it's uploaded, if you're somebody that you know, just listens to the podcast, there's power. You guys have power you have power to make decisions and and it's very important that you support these people who are supporting barebo um i'm planning to continue to support these major events i don't know which ones yet um it has a lot to do with your support and everything that you guys do for it whether it's first flight whether it's cd whether it's john winker and and, and you know at his shop if you're in north carolina go go visit them. Um, they start their online store, support them. Same with ProLine and Bodoc. I mean, but, you know, Jeff Sanchez, he didn't, he didn't hesitate for a second to be like, yeah, absolutely. Now Chrissy works for him and Chrissy um, gives him a lot of positive press, but he sees the benefit in that and is like, absolutely. I'm going to return the favor. And that's what you guys need to, you, you guys need to understand out there that it's, like we are a very small fish in a very large pond and us, our, while our little group is very tight, that doesn't really mean that we are at the same level as compound and Olympic recurve, because there's a lot of money that's thrown at those two. And it's because there's more shooters across the world and more companies diving into that market. And if you guys want those companies to see the value in Barebo and find ways to get into the Barebo, you guys have to support everyone as much as you can and not just talk about, oh, the numbers are numbers. Numbers aren't always enough. I just want you guys to know that. Um, That's right. And big companies like that, 
Rob Caulfield, you know, let's just talk about major companies, Hoyt, Excel, any of those major companies, they can't just decide today they're going to do something, right? They're not going to say, oh, you know what? We're going to do Bearbow this year. Like that, they have to think long-term. They can't, they can't be as responsive as we can as a smaller group. So they have to think long-term, like, is this going to be long-term beneficial are we going to profit from this? Is this going to be our, is this going to be our gains? That's something that they have to measure over years and years and years. And while Barebo is really big right now, Barebo six years ago was really small. Seven years ago, by comparison, was really small. And so if you went to the classic for the Barebo uh, event, y- you were part of a pretty small group. Mm-hmm. Now, and because of YouTube and everything else, Barebo's gotten huge and the attendance and the attention that we're getting has gotten huge. But those companies who've been around forever, they're they're going, well, I mean, you you guys are all right, but you only you're just a flash in the pan right now. So they say, I mean, I don't believe that's to be true, but that you have to they have seen this stuff before. That's right. That's they've right. seen they've seen things come and go they've seen classes come so, and go so they're just waiting for the long-term benefit make the long-term sure. payout and in the meantime in the meantime it's up to us mm-hmm. and i i put that pretty us word pretty heavily on my shoulders um but it's up to everybody if you want to see payouts if you want to see coverage if you want to see that kind of stuff that's that's up to you guys that's up to us so post your pictures online send them to frank or marcel so he can edit them and then put them out on the bare boat i mean marcel is marcel donates i can't even imagine how many hours of his time he donates to make sure that those photos get he's still posting photos that's right so if you (laughs) you want the coverage if you want the recognition you know get a hold of frank frank's gonna do his barebow project stuff Uh, i'm probably gonna do some independent sponsorships of these shoots but Mm -hmm. pull your money together donate five bucks donate ten bucks yeah if you pull your money together barebow payouts will become a thing and when that's a thing companies will recognize it shooters will recognize it um I don't know if it was true or not, but I saw a rumor that uh, there was a Korean archer who shot a barebow tournament recently, a Korean Olympic archer who shot a barebow tournament recently. And, and like the coach freaked out. No way. Why? Because that person said, well, maybe that might be fun or whatever. Now that's not something they probably get to choose, right? That's something they just did outside of their normal, um, you know, assigned curriculum. Yeah. But that's something like, if is that a thing? If that's a thing, then that's, that's cool right that means we're getting some real traction wow i didn't know that i'm gonna have you're gonna have to share that with me if you saw like a video or a post i saw i saw like a flash of it on facebook it was on facebook for literally like two minutes but i couldn't even go back and find it it was gone oh i hate when that happens i hate when that happens i i think where who i think wherever it got posted it got taken down not lost in my feed oh okay okay that stinks surely somebody had to screenshot it but it's probably somebody from korea so I, right. we're not we're not going to see it um, but but even if it's a rumor only it's still a very interesting rumor yeah it really is it really is because that's like that's like the holy grail of olympic recurve so it's like you know that's right you yeah. don't mess you don't mess you don't mess with that you, mess with you don't mess with that that's right. but, and, and like and i know he's not competing but and i wish he would but like jake kaminsky's gotten really heavy into barebo and and we hear a lot of them on social media right now. I think it would be amazing if he would show up and see what he can do with one at an event. Um, but hit well from a promotional hit. standpoint, it would it would have benefits. Sure, it and sure his, would. But his weight as an Olympic archer, we're talking about an, an expert in that field, right? Mm-hmm. Whether whether you like him or not, he is a fantastic Olympic archer. Sure. Uh, and, and honestly, it would probably be a very good barebow archer too, maybe a great barebow archer. Mm-hmm. But his attention to barebow has drawn a lot of interest. And yeah. that is important. Absolutely. Like all of these little things add up in huge, huge ways. Yeah, I, I, I think though that 
the one and uh, Jake, I've watched some of his videos. I haven't watched any in quite some time. I think one of the one of the reasons he doesn't probably transfer over is because he still has an affliction for Olympic recurve, and sure. he realizes that doing both of them at a high level it's is nearly difficult. impossible to do. Yeah. Um, it's hard enough to compete with the top upper echelon Olympic recurve, and then then you have in Barbo you have you know, a handful that venture into the top three per periodically. And then you have Demer and Grayson and, and that are probably the most consistent um, yeah. for sure in, in America. I'm not, so understand everyone that, that's listening to this, that's from out of the, out of the country and stuff. Like, you know, we have the Eric Johnson's and the Fredericks and Leo's up there now. And, you know, um, there's, a, there's plenty of others, David Garcia and the guys that, that you know, but, you know, it's, it's definitely, I, I don't know what, I don't know what will become of Barebo if we start get grabbing, pulling from some Olympic recurve. You know, I've talked to Justin Hewish, well, I talk to him often, but, you know, and, you know, we all talk, I was like, dude, you, going, he's not going Barebo. No, well, I've talked to him about it. And I said, I was like, you ever going to shoot Barebo? He goes, if the Olympic recurve thing this time around doesn't work out, I will go bare bow. It's going to work out. He's it's going to work out. Win, so. You don't, you don't win two Olympic gold medals and, and, and then come back. And now you're like, you're, he's pushing, he's my age and he's pushing podiums at yeah. in his forties. That's right. Right now. Like his, he's just getting, and the guy just came back to the sport. So like, I, you know, put that in perspective, everyone, some of these guys, Speaking of perspective, just in case nobody's following it, it's important to me. Serena Williams won last night. That's two wins. In case I saw you that. don't know who this woman is, if you've been living under a rock for 20 years, she's making history, and it's the last time she's ever going to do it. Pay attention. This is important. Show your respect. Yeah. This lady changed athletics for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, that's, for sure. That's my, that's my two cents on that. Yeah, no, that's good. That's, I'm glad you. I'm glad you brought that up. She, uh, did you see the the post tournament interview? Yeah, and the, and she see the look she gave the the reporter. Oh, man. That was yeah. priceless, right? Yeah, I'm not even gonna ruin it for everyone. How do you feel about that? Uh, what'd you say? She's like, she kind of looked at her like, no, yeah, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was it was it was so cool. Um, so anyways, with with as we're, I'm 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 actually past halfway on my cup. Um. So before we, you know, get, go off on any other tangents. Yeah. So let's talk about the classic. So um, I am going to can do the same um, conglomerate of sponsorships for people who are want to throw their hat into the ring and, and, and want to do it, but doing it in a smaller scale is not, is not your thing. I will offer that again, and we will you're do gonna, that for the classic. You're gonna put that on your uh, on your online store, a uh, sponsorship uh, pay link. Yeah, same 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 way we did it for for the the open, but we're gonna do it for the classic, so that it gives somebody that's an independent, somebody who just owns a business and loves Barebo, and they want to throw some money at it, they can do that. You know, then it just comes to me, and I end up having to pay all the fees and the taxes and everything on it, and that's fine. It is what it is, and then I just re I I um the the relationship is there is 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 the podcast notoriety and the constant uh, hammering of and tags and social media and exposure and stuff like that. Um, but John's gonna John John originally was gonna get in with us, but let's talk about what you're gonna do for the classic now. So I've been talking to Rob a little bit about the classic and he's going to allow me to uh, sponsor the classic payouts this year solely in the barebow class. Um, to my knowledge, it's the first time he's allowed anyone to do that. And I think he's allowing other companies as well to do that. But so I'm going to, as first flight archery, I'm going to sponsor barebow payouts um, through the classic, just like any other regular sponsor would. Um, and 100% of my sponsorship will go to barebow payouts. So we won't be supporting the, uh, Olympic compound, uh, bow hunter classes like that. Um, Frank, hopefully he's going to be able to do the same thing. 
Mm -hmm. um, he's going to try to pool that money together and then um, he can have a, a bare bow project conglomerate uh, sponsorship as well. Mm -hmm. um, so just keep your eyes out for that. Uh, we haven't gotten the numbers worked out exactly. So I don't know at what level I'm going to be able to sponsor um, because I am also um, thinking down the road that I'm trying to work with NFAA on the Vegas shoot um, and, and some other events too. So uh, just keep your eyes open. Um, and so that you know, barebow payouts, um, they are coming down the line. And, and I personally expect all of you listening to go on to Frank's website soon and put your five dollars in oh I'll, so. yeah i'll be putting i'll be putting some options out there um yeah, but you do, know we talked about do something and and put your money where your mouth is you you want payouts well you know put your five dollars in the pot or whatever um, yeah. i'm gonna do the same thing a little more than five dollars probably but i'm gonna i'm gonna do the same thing because of my success here what barebow community has done for me um i'm i'm gonna turn right around and give that back as quick as i can yeah, and you know you're you're just you're you are a a leader in the community whether it's as a shooter, um, I, or you run up and down the Joe Ed line coaching, or as a business owner, uh, John. The the Barbell community owes you a, a significant thank you, and I know that's not what you're looking for, and I know that's not what you want, but um, I just I want people to understand, you know, the significance of what the statement is of put your money where your mouth is. As, as a community, we need to do that. Um, and you need to be able to shoulder some of the weight. The U.S. Open, you know, that situation, um, you know, I didn't, I, it didn't sit well with me that there was no payouts. Um, it, it, was a real, it was a real jab in the ribs, too, because they actually used the bare bow podium picture on the payouts page of I'll, the brochure. I think I have a screenshot saved. I'll look for it, but I'm going to put that in the, the, the video edited version of the podcast, like right here. Right. And then I'm going Just to- Just in case you're wondering, they took our picture, which probably got the most press, used it in their brochure, and then said, oh, we're not going to pay those guys. Yeah. You know, and, and Rod Mentzer, when I- So I'll, I'll explain how this came up real quick because I'm running out of time. Um, I, think, I think the conversation started between me and John- there's somebody posted it online. I, I go right to the source people. I don't, you know, I don't make assumptions. I go immediately screenshot, boom, right, right to Rob Metzer. I said, Rod, is this, please tell me if this is accurate or not. No accusations. No, you know, and the response was, yeah, actually last year's prize money was an accident. That wasn't supposed to happen. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, the USAT tournaments were over budget. And they made, they actually had by like 15 grand. Um, so, you know, their USA Archery's budget for tournaments was not as, as, as good as they, as it should have been. Um, long story short, I said, okay, thanks. Didn't point fingers, didn't show them my disgust. Instead, we did something about it. Right. And that came to conversation. John was the very first person I texted because we've been having this conversation for over a year. He said, screw it. And, and this is a, a testament to the community. Within 24 hours, we were, I think at that point in time, we were like 2,500 bucks within, within 24 hours. Yeah, and that, it got fast. It was fast. And, and, you know, is the U.S. open the tournament to throw all that money at? I think it's... I think we've set a precedent. I think it shows USA Archery what could be, what they could be capable of if they did it in a different format. And I hope that they pay attention to that. I do know they paid attention. If any of you are not members of USA Archery, you need to become one. I'm, this, is, this, is, this is a little off topic, but I'm going to throw it out there now anyways. USA Archery has a, an elected board. You guys have the power to nominate someone. If the opportunity comes, I'm not sure when that is. I have to watch. I am going to, I'm going to ask for a nomination for one of the board. We need to get someone that's got bare bow in mind in the ranks of what's going on at USA Archery. We currently do not have that. We have some support, but we need somebody who is, is definitely pushing for more inclusive bare bow stuff. 
Um, right. And they're going to have to be board members because we're not currently allowed to have student or we're not allowed to have athlete representatives right now because Fairboad hasn't been able to represent right. in the level of shooting that requires um, athlete pre, uh, representatives. We can't have athlete representatives. So right. don't don't say like, why don't we have any? We don't have any because it's not it's not currently possible. So if we want a voice, we're going to have to be on the board on a board or or something like that yeah so i'm i have put my name out there already it's it for all of you to realize you need to become members of usa archery in order to vote you need to keep those memberships active um and you need to watch for updates if you want change you can't complain about change unless you're willing to step up and do something about it and that 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 goes out to all of you John stepped up. I've tried to step up in numerous ways across the last few years. The, the U S open was just the, was just the catalyst that realized, listen, if we want change, we need to make the change ourselves. So, you know, with that being said, um, we're going to try to do U S open again in the same format. We're going to do, um, um, Lancaster archery classic. We will see about NFA and maybe USA archery indoors. I don't know. Indoor, the indoor finals does not get the same attention as the U S open. I will say that. Um, but we'll, you know, we'll see what happens. I see some comments in the live feed, John, you know, talking about, we need our own organization and, and, you know, I'm, you know, that might be a thing. I don't know if I have the capacity to run another thing. So somebody else would have to step up and do that at least that right now. Um, you know, right now it's small and it's easy. If you get too organized and too complicated, it's going to become burdensome. Um, right now, it's just keep it simple, stupid. Um, yeah. we, well, we, that's, we that's the way the way we did it for the open is pretty simple. Right. You know, it just you just have to be OK with like I am this essentially just forwarding that money to the people who win and um you know you guys are getting some advertising out of it because that's what that's what i can do um but i'm hoping that you know as we you know as this thing develops you know maybe we put a board together uh you know maybe we you know we we do put a, an organizational some kind or whatever a leadership of whatever mastermind group of barebow people start an organization and you pay a membership fee i don't know because it'd be so easy for you guys to like $20 annual membership fee. Take that 20 bucks times, you know, 500 people. You just created yourself one hell of a pot. As long as you understand like that, you have to have somebody that's willing to run that. that and I think that's the part, John, a lot of people don't not realize. Me. Yeah, no, yeah. I know. Yeah, so I'm not asking not you me. to do any more than you've done. I get my, it. My plate's full as far as work goes. Same. But, yeah, I get it. I get put it. Put Frank on the board and, and we can all tell Frank what to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. It will, no, it'll be put frank on the board and everybody complains to frank when they don't get what they want that's, that's right put frank <laughs> on the board and then send frank your complaints yeah and then send me that's and that's essentially what's gonna happen i can't believe i'm volunteering yeah, that's this. what we're gonna do yeah you are <laughs> well it's Good job. it's yeah i mean it is what it is man either it goes great um and we can make change or we get there and realize that's right we're not gonna listen to nobody um and, and if you and if you want usa payouts if you want uh, more attention lancaster more, payouts, yep. NFA payouts you, you need to go shoot these shoots that's the other if, thing yeah if, if, if they're that. shooting the arizona cup and you're anywhere near there you need to go to the arizona cup if they're shooting socal and you're anywhere near there you need to go shoot socal you you cannot expect them to just pay at the open if you haven't played the rest of the games all through the year because they're looking back and they're going, oh, there's only seven guys at that event. Well, we're not going to pay a class with seven guys in it. And you go, yeah, but there was 300 of us at the open. Well, eh, come on. If you don't, if you don't support all the way through the year, yeah. they're not going to go, well, we, we're going to have USA open payouts because we expect those seven guys to turn into 300. Yeah. And listen, people, there's nobody in compound yeah. recurve out there having this conversation. That's right. Not a single, not a single entity people that have a platform nobody's out there telling olympic recurve and compound hey go, go show up for the tournaments because you know what if you haven't noticed they do the numbers of compound went way down yeah for the open and usa well usa archery target nationals meanwhile barebow's continuing to climb and i've saying this for two or three years now 
we have continued to climb sooner or later we are going to we're going to level out yeah but we gotta keep going to shoot if you don't want it to level out if you don't want it to if you want it to, you want to keep having that that tooth in the game of we're the ones that are growing our own class despite the lack of support elsewhere then you no need shoot. to show up put up or shut up it's one or the right. other that's right and it doesn't matter if you're it doesn't matter if you can't win no, it doesn't. You ha- you yeah. ha- there, there's only one winner, right? There's always only one winner. You, you can't win every time. Sometimes you sometimes you're never gonna win. Sometimes you play you play to play. Um, but playing to play is just as important because only one person wins, everybody else learns. So go and learn. Um yeah. I, I've got awesome. I've got like what? I've got I've got one big win under my belt. Um I've got a lot of second places throughout my career both barebow and compound and uh and second places are like the best worst thing that can happen but i have so many tournaments under my belt in in both types of shooting i can't even count them i was digging out through an old bow case the other day one of those I, saw that. Bow cases. I, I found some scorecards from way back in pennsylvania and i was like holy smokes look at those scores i was like wow. i used to be able to shoot <laughs> Yeah, you guys don't realize this, but Winker's a PA boy at heart. So, yeah, you no, know, I'll just just so you know. So is Rick Stonebreaker. So is Joe Kasurik. Just saying, there's a lot of us PA boys that have. The irony of those old out. scores are is those scores now here where I live now would be like records, really? and in Pennsylvania it's like twentieth. Yeah, <laughs> in Pennsylvania, you Pennsylvania shoot 550 and everybody's seat. like 550. Well, you couldn't do better than that. <laughs> yeah, Pennsylvania is a hot seat for archery, it always has yeah. been. I mean, but, like, we are the um, you know, we're like the what is it? Where, where are all the ASAs at down in that area? Like, oh, yeah, now, I always use Alabama, Missouri. I don't Pennsylvania know, Pennsylvania is the mecca of archery. It, it is kind of in some ways. I mean, there's so much talent and so much from a national from from that. I think there's other areas, John. Utah's really kind of developed um, because of Hoyt being there and stuff like that. And well, yeah. um, and a few a few others, I think uh, Arizona a little bit, too. But, you know, it's definitely in the south with the ASA for sure you know that that little corridor there where all the asas are up up to ohio like there's there's some areas there but that's just compound the difference with i think where we're at we draw shooters from new york we draw shooters from new jersey where you know we got we're, just where we're at and lancaster plays a huge role in that so but i'm down to my last swig my my guy yep me too all right so bear shooters down. go shoot bear shooters support yourselves um, get behind Frank and what he's doing there and um, look for us at the classic and hopefully by the classic um, I'll be back in shooting condition I started shooting again a couple weeks ago so we're uh, good we're trying to put together an indoor game now awesome man uh, are you going to host indoor fetus I plan to all right I don't have them on the schedule yet I'm going to host at least um, at least one or two of those hopefully this year I'm gonna um, I'm gonna start hosting my SmackDown again. Um, I haven't done that in a few years, um, but that was real popular when I did. Um, so that's just a that's gonna be a money shoot. That's gonna be like a mini, a mini classic, whatever you want to call it. So mm-hmm. it's uh, I'm gonna host that this year. Um, if you're in the Raleigh area, please stop by the shop and say hello. I've got a bunch of pictures up in the archery range of barebow shooters. If you uh, if you come by and you see a picture on the wall, um, grab a sharpie and and sign the wall. That'd be fun. awesome um get some dates out to me um i yeah. definitely want to make it down if i can't make it down for all of them i want to make it down for at least one okay. uh one of the fetus for sure Leslie maybe. and i are working on that schedule hopefully hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll have something put together excellent excellent all right man thank you so much you have a wonderful yep. day i have a meeting to get to for my real job um everyone thank you for joining in so early in the morning Take care. And um, you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Variable Project out. Thanks, Frank. See ya.